how do you think of threats to liberalism in the United States today? And uh, does the liberal tradition, which, uh, as you argue, I think rightly, has been able to afford us great progress on questions Absolutely. like gay rights, uh, how how will this this liberal ideology come out of this moment? Do you think that it'll it'll prevail? I mean, look, there is no greater tool that gay people had in this country than the First Amendment, and I mean, in, in all its forms, freedom of expression and the freedom to assemble. Right? Those were that, that's what gay people were denied um, in in the personal individual sense, and in that they you know didn't come out of the closet, uh, but also they couldn't, like I, I mentioned the, the the Supreme Court case, they couldn't even write arguments in their favor until that was overturned and then you know assembling in a bar right was illegal you couldn't serve alcohol to homosexuals in most american cities uh, that's why stonewall erupted into a riot because the police were raiding the bar so gay people have had no better uh ally in their cause than free expression and first amendment and it pains me now when i look at the polls from you know fire the foundation for individual rights and expression and they poll young people. And you see that self-identifying LGBTQ young people are actually more supportive of shouting down, disinviting you know, certain speakers than their non-LGBTQ peers. That really pains me. As a gay, I was speaking as about a, this at the beginning of this conversation when uh, you, know, you talked about this incredible power of federal bureaucracy. Uh, being used to fire people for being gay. Um, that's a true form of cancellation. Um, and and to shut down uh, these these publications. And, and and it just strikes me as such a weird tension today where, uh, you know, activists are saying, you know, the whole society is uh, secretly racist or secretly homophobic um, and transphobic and all of those different things. And at the same time, Many of those uh, activists also want to empower those same bureaucratic institutions and corporations and universities and all those other places to to have the power to to censor what we can say and who can yeah. assemble. And and you know I think our history is just such a strong testament to how dangerous that is. Absolutely, and um, yeah, it just I don't I don't I don't know what to say. It just boggles me if you if you read the history of gay people in this country, it is a story of transparency and expression winning out over you know secrecy and shame and being quiet and silenced. Um, I just think it's and this probably applies to a lot of the conversations you have with people. I think for a lot of people, they don't have principles. They they want power, and once they get power, then they want to exercise that power, right? And so. The left in general was the party of free speech because it used to be the left that was screwed for expressing their free speech in this country in most cases, right? You go back to the founding of the ACLU. Who was it founded to protect? You know, anarchists and anti-war activists. And then you go through the civil rights movement, the gay movement, the women's movement, you know, radicals on campus, um, all sorts of left-wing causes and progressive causes being shut down. But now that those people now run these institutions, particularly academia, where they have the, the most concentrated control, a lot of them just don't, they're not sticking true to their principles because they now have the power, right? Um, and I think that's, um, to, to make your, your uh, adherence to principles you know, solely conditional on whether or not you have, you have power, I think is, is very dangerous.